Ooh, this is 50.com. The Heineken is here. We got the man of the hour. Last, yeah, last time I seen you, you was in an orange jumpsuit, man. <laughs> you, and now you got a, you know, well-tailored suit. You know what I mean? You know, you, you're always escaping drama, man. No drama mama, as I tell my daughter. We got Omari was I, was Hardwick. I, in orange, I was in an orange jumpsuit? Yeah, I mean, that, that's yeah. what, that was yeah, yeah, floating yeah. around yeah, on yeah. the gram. Yeah, yeah. The orange yeah, yeah. jumpsuit. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But, you know, congratulations on the success Thank you, of the show. Thank you, man. Um, you've made it hard for men like us because women want us to be drug dealers, club owners. Do they really? It's the delusion that you're selling, great acting. All right. It's not your fault. It's a great script. It is a great story. You know, it's ironic because today, obviously, we're celebrating MLK. We're celebrating Dr. King. And, you know, one of the things that uh, we forget about, whether you are of, of Christian uh, faith or denomination or whether mm -hmm. you are of another uh, faith the reality is a lot of powerful men have all sort of had to deal at least even if not directly they've had to indirectly deal with people like the character that i play every day you know i mean you you talk about dr king and of course from georgia where i grew up all the way to uh washington dc he was definitely dealing with the have-nots mm. and those that needed help and, and needed some uplifting and had on orange jumpsuits this is true who needed tutelage and, and ministering and, and, and sort of a mentoring that dr king ironically um, as we celebrate him today and his flesh has been gone for a very long time i should say the reality is he's still mentoring so many of us in so many ways and so uh, that's MLK now to me, as far as I can, as, as far as I can uh, see. He's still very present in us. What have you done to keep his legacy and his dream alive? And your your aspect of how you carry yourself, how you, the characters you portray. How do you feel like you're enhancing his dream to the public? I think um, just in terms of, I think it's a great question, mm -hmm. but I would imagine that uh, just in trying to be better. You know, I definitely would always liken myself to being a grower. Mm. Uh, you know, I know you come across many people that are at the same place they were. Yeah. The last time you left them. I, I know dudes that spent 20 years in front of a corner store, more years than Kobe in the league. You feel me? And mm. I don't even mean it always in terms of a physical mm -hmm. uh, placement that they haven't left, but sometimes just in terms of a perspective. They're still at a 14-year-old, 20-year-old perspective, and they're 45, mm. 50 years of age. And so I think I've always been cool on not overjudging and not trying to cast a stone on anybody knowing I got my own shit but or my own crap but at the same uh, at the same token I, I definitely am proud of the fact that I tend to grow and go from Monday to Tuesday to the following Monday and being a little bit better than I was the week before so that give it back to kids people that have not necessarily grown up the way I did or grew up the way I did and didn't necessarily get the help needed from people like I got help from certain people thank God um, or perhaps I wouldn't be here talking to you. And so my thought is just to consist consistently give back. And so that's my Dr. King, uh, my Dr. King, Dr. King activism is, is always about being active in, mm, in, yes. in actually giving back to kids. And even if it's five minutes of a conversation at a bus stop, just being Omari and being real, not being fake. They want to talk to somebody who actually respects where they've been, more importantly, where he or she believes mm. that they can go. And I always think that they can go to places that they might not even think they can go to. Your, your career is very interesting and dope to me because, you, you know, like everybody, you have a, a great story of how you started out. I've seen where you were on multiple shows. There was one show, I forgot the name, where you played a cop, undercover oh, yeah. cop. Dark Blue. I, I, Dark Blue. Dark Blue, I like that. That was a good show. That man. was a really good yeah, show I with you a, saying that. with um, um, it was Dylan McDermott. Dylan McDermott, yeah, yes. Really I love that Thank show. You, man. And a lot of I, people didn't want that canceled. They were really like, yo, that was it. Of course, I wouldn't be here. This is true. And I remember that. They the, all lead to each other, right? Each show kind of. I still the remember the day when you guys came up to the office. <laughs> and everybody's like, yeah, 50's doing some new show called Power or, or whatever. They would have been flippant with it. Like, ah. Yeah, and <laughs> you guys were there, you. And y'all had the meeting yeah, for yeah. about two hours. Yeah, yeah. And then five, me, me and Joe probably. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And five months later, you guys are the biggest thing on television. I'd never seen a turnaround like that in my life. Like, what did that portrayal? Ha what what elevation mentally has it done for you? It hasn't necessarily. Uh, it hasn't. You know, I haven't become brand new on the thought that mm -hmm. uh, that the character 
would be taken in the way he has. I was always in belief that if you saw a character who had this kind of journey and all of the characters connected to this guy, uh, from Kanan to Dre to, to Tommy to uh, Notorious uh, Tasha and Lila's mm -hmm. Angela and every other freaking character involved, cops included. Definitely. I always figured that, uh, that whatever grandpops and father and uncles coaches gave me allowed me not only to be somebody that could grow the perspective of our people in terms of black people, but I also thought that I had the range as a human being to allow for everybody who watched it to grow. Um, you just hadn't really seen a guy, including James Gandolfini, rest in peace. I, even his Tony Soprano wasn't as complicated as, and as yes. interesting as James Go St. Patrick. This is true. So I, I never was confused about the reality that it could be received the way it was received, but I definitely felt the pressure of, but what happens if it's received that way? I, I, vis I envisioned it. Mm. I've always had vision. Um, Jim Brown, the the yeah, running back for I the didn't Browns. Know if it would go as big as it. Yeah, would. that's how he always looked at himself playing football. Yeah, and you vision. Have vision. The, mm -hmm. You know, sight is the ability. Sight is the ability to see where one is. Mm. Vision is the ability to see where one is going while standing where you are. And so I've never been really. Uh, that was my gift. My gift from God was always um, a, a, a cool eleven-year-old kid who was nerdy and dorky at the same time, but. Had a lot of Decatur in me, but went away to a private school with a bunch of white kids. And so there's a bunch of different elements in me. And mm -hmm. The vision of what all of those colors combined could be, um, I kind of saw it happening the way it has. So I'm proud of the show. What, what has been like the most positive reaction and the negative aspect of who you've become now in terms of the popularity of your character, the, the, the visibility now, like what, cause I've talked yeah. to celebrities off camera and the yeah, stories yeah. are amazing. Yeah, like yeah. what is something that it throws you off? Ironically, or? brother, I just wrote, a, I'm working on an album right now, uh, which, which 50 is very aware of. Mm. Uh, the world will soon know, um, uh, comes out in April, but it's called later Decada. All right. Um, and ironically, the latest song that I did on the joint, uh, I'm supposed to do a joint with 50, but the latest joint that I did is called Star Wars. And the okay. concept is the wars of a star mm. or, or whoever you claim to be a star. And it's really about that war becomes a war within the star, not necessarily between the fan and the star, but within the star himself or herself. And so it's difficult, whether you're talking to Andre Holland or Amari or Olivia Wilde or mm -hmm. David Oyelowo or Q-Tip or anybody present today who's considered by a conglomerate of a younger generation uh, specifically to be a star. Definitely. But a younger generation wants to be a star as well. You just don't really know the pitfalls that come with it. And you don't really understand that at the end of the day, the star just urinates the same way as everybody else. This is true. They cry the same way as everybody else. They have the same pains. And so I definitely am a family man who the negatives of it have, have been when I'm with the family. That's How tough is that? Because well, I'm such a, I like yeah. to be a papa. And my kids are too, two and four years of age. And so they only have a window to remember pops being present for them. Mm. And so if they're 11 and 13 years old, then it's a different thing. Maybe I can stop for 20 pictures. But at this point, it's very difficult to sort of negotiate me spending time with them. So that they the never moment forget. you get one picture, oh, it's, it's 35 it's pictures. Yeah. It's 35 pictures. And so celebrity is a funny thing. It's an ugly, it's a, a beautiful beast, if that's the way I can put it. It is. It's a beautiful beast. Let, let, let's talk about sports for a little bit, because I know you're a busy man. Absolutely. And a sports junkie. What can we do? to help the New York Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly. <laughs> like, I, what are we going to do? No, I asked Lala. I know. I Mello's my man. That's man. my man, 100 grand. I, you know, I think uh, Mello's got to get to the place, I think, where he can embrace. I, I think for him, because he's such an aggressor and he's such a killer mm -hmm. in so many ways, he's got to get to the point where He's able to embrace perhaps what LeBron was able to with the Kyrie being on that team. Mm. Now, dare I say, obviously, Kyrie entered when LeBron vacated, vacated for a moment. And gave but the reality is, you know, I, there's no Michael in six rings without Scotty. This is true. New York hasn't necessarily had the Scotty for Carmelo yet. What poor Zingas, do you think he could develop <laughs> fast enough? To where it will matter for Melo? I think when you and I watch TV or uh, yeah. if we walk in a house and look at a house decorated, you and I both would pretty much agree on that room is decorated well, that one's not. So I think mm. you even ask about 
the cat that you're asking about. The reality is, is that when you look at a mellow, you go, that's a star and he's gifted. And when you look at anybody who's been presented or introduced as a potential Kyrie or Scottie Pippen or, or Kobe to Shaq of sorts or Dwayne Wade to LeBron, you don't really come up with the reality of going, yep. Yep. You don't say yep. You go, eh. Mm. Yeah. So we got to figure that out with the Knicks, and we got to figure out a coach that can wrangle all that together, you know? It's an attitude shift. Two more questions, and, and, and we got. And Spike maybe okay. should talk to them more during halftime. <laughs> there's, a, there's this running argument going around and running debate that if LeBron wins two more championships. Two more. What would that give him? Five. five. Okay. That he, would, he could most possibly pass Jordan as the greatest player. Yes or no? We're all shaking our head no. Never. Never. What Luka. if he gets? What if he Luka. gets? What if he gets seven? It's because at that point it's not rings. It's never been rings. Mm -hmm. It's the mentality. The mentality. God bless LeBron. He might walk in a room and at times, which I love about him, he might at times care about what certain parts of the room thinks. Michael mm. never cared. Mm. Kobe. I'm not a huge Kobe fanatic, but in Kobe's defense, he never He's a killer. cared what the room thought. So there's a part of LeBron that as gifted as he is, I would say he's Larry Bird meets Dominique Wilkins with Magic Johnson's perspective. He is as great a basketball oh, wow. talent as we've ever seen. That's but true. I just don't think, I shouldn't say that. I know that he doesn't have that thing that Michael Jeffrey Jordan that we all grew up watching uh, yes. possesses. He just, he just doesn't. And, and there's no knock to him. Michael was Michael. F Kobe's F still not Mike. <laughs> Final question. It's a little ratchet, but you know, you're a man whose character has brawled and really put oh, for his, sure. his fist up. For sure. And Omari has in life too. Yeah. But I'm past that. Uh, understood. I got counseling. Chris Brown, Soldier Boy. Therapy. Chris Brown, Soldier Boy. You know, they're going to box. You didn't hear about this? I don't know Soldier Boy. I think his name <laughs> is cool, but I love the name Soldier Boy. But Chris Breezy is really from that. He's from the, the, the gut of Virginia. Virginia. He's the gut of it. I've not, been out there. Not this part of it. Not. He's from that. Chris they, Brown is a beautiful kid who I know, who I pray mm, for constantly. I really want him to grow up in many ways, but that's a very special thank, kid. He's a yeah. special, special kid. Since, yeah. And he's a nut. I've been to Virginia. And I'm embracing the nut uh, part of that nut that yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. Bad meaning good, not yeah. bad meaning bad. Yeah. DMC, I love you. Mm, and Breezy's you know, crazy. Yeah. Soldier Boy, your name is cool, though. <laughs> Omari Hardwick, uh -huh. watch out for Virginia. They like arresting people out there for being cops. I know. Sad. Yes. God bless y'all.